Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here this our new campaign in Darkest Hour, Mod Parts of Iron Ford 1.0 edition. Uh, but we're playing as Germany, the German Reich. Well, I'm a republic really. Uh, I guess just German Reich, but whatever. Um, led by Paul von Hindenburg and Kurt von Schleicher. But the Cone talks and then we'll talk about our focus. Hilda had been working in the von Schroeder's household for almost 20 years now, but never before had she felt this level of anxiety when preparing for just a single meeting. She had prepared for many meetings before, but this time, instead of some businessman or banker, two of Germany's most powerful men have, some, have come to discuss the future of the country. Countless thoughts of how this meeting might affect her family might ran through her head, ranging from bad to, bad to worse, but then she heard several cars approaching. She quickly snapped out of it, finished her preparations, and retreated into the servant's kitchen to wait until the guest needed something. After 45 minutes, that felt like an eternity. The fort of notification that Herr von Poppen would like a coffee and Herr Hit, uh, Adolf uh, would like a tea finally reached the servant's kitchen. Eager to finally do something, she immediately jumped to, or jumped up and began fumbling around the kitchen, almost forgetting how to perform these simple tasks, while almost dropping the tray uh, on her way out of the kitchen. When she entered the meeting room, she immediately noticed the tense atmosphere and tension that loomed in the room, even though both Von Poppen and that Adolf guy immediately dropped the conversation to await the beverages, looking at her with impatience, waiting to resume their verbal battle. She quickly sat down the tray and almost sprinted out of the room, eager to escape this nightmare of a meeting and begin again to begin to wait orders in the servant's kitchen. After almost two hours of nothing, curiosity and a hint of boredom overcame her, and she pressed her ear to the door in order to learn something about this curious meeting, and while she only heard a fraction of the conversation regarding minister positions, the head of the government, and Hindenburg, amongst other things, she only began realizing that it was just a when the terms Joint Government and Reichskanzler Adolf were uttered followed by the sound of what appeared to be a handshake, even behind closed doors the walls of ears. Also, I should not click on that last one, but just from my own perspective, I don't know if the desert watching, they might be, they might not be, if they are, great, if they're not, okay. Um, but uh, I, one suggestion for, for the text, the font, the font itself is a little hard to read, so uh, if we can make it any more clear, that'd be great. Just as a suggestion, you don't have to do it, but Reichskanzler, hit! Uh, Adolf! <coughs> Adolf! Our glorious leader, some Adolf dude, has become Reichskanzler or Chancellor of Germany. It's a historic day for a nation who will finally see a golden age under his rule. His goals for uplifting German society and ambitions on Lebensraum has inspired the vast majority of the German people, who have been disgruntled by the late and who intend to sell this nation for their personal interests, most especially those ant animalistic, <coughs> animalistic uh, <coughs> Jews. The communists, of course, who intend to break down the social order and replace it with a society that's inherently anti-German and the politicians who exploit crises for their selfish intentions, with himself as the Reichskanzler and his party, the NDS NSDAP, in control of a nation's politics, perhaps our destiny can finally be reclaimed, and peace can finally come in our time. Oh, if you wonder about Von Schleicher's plot exposed, or exposed, please go ahead, is there any hope left for the German democracy? Uh, secret meeting with at Von Ribbentrop's house. Oh, he resigns, look at that! Beautiful. Maybe like about that, please go ahead. Nothing could be worse than him, right? Beautiful. Berlin, the city that never sleeps, quite literally. Over the past few days, the city of Berlin has been rife with political instability and the deterioration of a social order. It's common to see a random citizen being beaten or bruised based on assumptions of either being a communist or a fascist law and order. Those things are things of the past here in the city, yet it is eerily quiet in Berlin Dahlem. It is a void of chaos, rather it's the only enclave of tranquility, thanks to Joachim von Ribbentrop, one of uh, uh, Hitler's inner circle. It has remained such silence compared to the rest of Berlin. That is not until convoys of cars started roaming its roads. Automobile is not uncommon in Germany, but these are not ordinary cars. These are luxury cars. Cars that are exactly mostly owned by the highest echelons of German society. What's happening? Then, one by one, they get out of their little cars. Hitler, Goring, Von Pop, and Von Hindenburg. All of them arrived at Ribbentrop's residence. However, it's not just any Von Hindenburg. It is Oscar Von Hindenburg, son of Reich's President Hindenburg. They entered Ribbentrop's residence, exchanging greetings, then ceased such and started business. Hitler asked Oscar into a private room in the villa, but out of sight of von Papen und von Ribbentrop. But no one could hear what was going on in the room. Four walls were insulated and soundproof. All that was heard were merely loud noises, some in jest and some in annoyance. Oscar ex exited the room, seemingly shocked yet with vigor in his face. Von Papen went to Hitler. Herr Hitler, what happened? Hitler replied with glee, a revolution happened, Herr Papen. The old man will be under our grasp. As soon as Hitler uttered such words, von Papen knew Hitler was the right man for the job. Von Papen has pledged his loyalty to Hitler, and plans are now in action. The die is cast in the Schleicher proposal. Once again, the secretary told him to take a seat and wait for the Reichskanzler to finish his appointments. It wasn't the first time he has been forced to wait in his political career, but it was the first time someone had done this to send a message to him. Don't try again, you lost. But despite the countless hours of discussion, the argument against the seemingly impossibly stubborn mind of the old general, he hadn't given up his, on his proposal. He had tried once more to convince him. Schleicher entered his office. Oh. Uh, slumped in his chair with baggy eyes, a shaking hand, and an ashtray that overflowed. It seemed like the wise old man with a determined eyes and sure voice he knew. Before had aged 20 years in just a year, Schleicher pitied him, but he had no choice but to deny the old man his rest. Rock's president, I hope that at the time you'd ponder convinced you that my proposal is the only way to prevent Germany from destroying itself. An intelligent man like you must truly understand the need for these, I admit rather dramatically, dramatic measures. 
Hindenburg's brow furrowed. No, Schleicher, you can't just declare a state of emergency and hope that the Nazis and communists just accept it. Schleicher responded immediately with anger. So what else should we do? Do nothing and twiddle our thumbs, waiting until all this the economic crisis, the Nazis and communists just disappear? You can't be serious. What do you want to do? A moment of silence filled the room. The uh, tired eyes of the old man betrayed his intentions. Schleicher resumed his shouting match me immediately. You can't be serious. You really think listening to Von Papen will do you any good? What has gotten into you? Enough of this. The old man nearly jumped from his seat, and just for a moment, it seemed his spirit had returned, but then it fell back into his chair. Drain of life once more. I won't approve uh, your proposal, Herr von Schleicher. It'll be this Republic's undoing. Now get out. Bad time to re read bad choices. I kind of want to read, actually, these now, because like these are, these are very story-driven. But to do this one, because well, I want to get to that one, um, I like to with well, the government safely secured under our big daddy, Adolf Hitler, it's time to reorient our priorities to something as important as a government, the military. When the first Valkyrie was lost, one of the conditions of the Treaty of Versailles was the reduction of the military, especially the army, which was reduced to a mandate of 100,000. It was neutered under the years of the Weimar Republic, unable to bring Germany to greatness, and instead it only served as a reminder of how weak we are, how we were the, at the whim of the Entente, yet, under the guidance of our big daddy, Hitler, we have a choice. A chance to build not only military, but a pride, glory, and a right to exist, yet we must bide our time, but we're not ready to take on the parasites of the West. Limited armor armament is possible. Secret armament. Cool. That's cool. Um, also, uh, a lot of things have changed in this mod from Hoi 4. Darkest Hour has changed up. Like the, Apparently the combat with meta, the battle meta, um, which I'm going to struggle with. So please let me know if you played this before and what tips I should follow when trying to uh, do okay. We have a lot of support companies too. And this is our infantry divisions, infantry battalions with, of course, artillery. So, uh, engineers and whatnot. So these are all locked. These are okay, I guess. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below because I, I know we're not going to get to a lot of warfare. It's still January. We're in the first five minutes as we're reading through everything. But this is my first time playing through everything here, so I really want to enjoy it. Due to the recent success of the National Socialist German Workers' Party in the Reichstag elections, a party leader of this Adolf guy has demanded that the Reich's president, Paul von Hindenburg, appoint him as chancellor. These men were met late last week and this morning Berlin saw the swearing in of a certain Adolf Hitler as a new Chancellor of Germany and fellow members of the NSDAP Wilhelm Frick and Hermann Goring sworn in as Minister of the Interior and a Minister of the Interior for Prussia, respectively. However, these new changes may be ill-fated. Many have not forgotten the 1932 presidential elections, where Hitler ran against incumbent Hindenburg and came in a close second. It's too close to tell whether this appointment to the Chancellorship will lead Germany into an era of prosperity or will lead Germany down a dark, dark path. Don't forget how people laughed at me 15 years ago. So remove with a state within a state, which gives us 25% more political power, uh, get rid of the negative ability for weekly stability, but we lose fascist support. Uh, cool. Beautiful. So we want to do that one. Uh, establish a Wehrmacht. That'd be really nice to do. Rex Marine. We can kind of wait. Even though I like those dockyards. That's not bad. Reichsstrasse uh, uh, Kretar of RLM. Milch will be available as chief of the Air Force, which is not bad. Um, but I want to focus on the economy. The Navy Act would be nice. We need the Rock Stack Fire, though, but the economic recovery policy. Also, we are there is money in this game as well, as mods, and we're going to have to learn how to deal with it. The Great Depression set the world hard, entire world hard, and the Reich is no exception, to get ourselves out of this hole of economic disaster and put the country in a path towards prosperity and success. We'll have to enact many different policies in line with our national socialist vision and our desire to inflict revenge upon those who defeat us in the Great War. These policies will be a radical departure from the economic strategies of past German governments, but it'll be exactly what the economy needs to bounce back and allow us to begin our extensive programs of rapid military rearmament. And unemployment is something we do need to keep an eye on for, so... But doing all this will be very beneficial for us, as we are making a little bit of money. Oh, crap. And I'm not used to this at all. So, the DNV, DNVP is actually somewhat supportive. Factions of interest. Shoot stop, Allah. Uh, uh, if you're about that, please go ahead. Low influence, high opinion. NSDAP conservatives, low influence, high opinion. NSDAP hardliners, both low. Um, with current influence and opinion, the faction is, uh, has the following effects on our country. More political power, nice. Reformists, interesting. Uh, Reichswehr, it refers to the current combined military forces of the Weimar Republic. Okay. Low opinion, influence is low. So, that kind of hurts us too. And the Stubab title. Low influence, low opinion. So, um, other than that, uh, we're only in uh, February now. And also, the economic policies, we can create public works, which I kind of want to do if we can ever get there. And or issue currency for more money, but it's going to cost us quite a bit. And right now, we have 33% unemployment, which is drastically high. But it kind of sucks. So, we do. Hey, look at this guy. What does Germany's future hold? We'll see. We're actually making half of political power today. Not bad. Nora Schneider, can we actually put you anywhere for that? No, okay. Just, just gonna defend for now. 
Hitler delivers a speech in the Sports Palace. In light of his recent appointment as the Reichskanzler by Reich President Hindenburg, Hitler, our big daddy is today taken to the Berlin of Sport Palace to celebrate the ship, his grand victory for all German people together with his most trusted advisors and friends and several thousands of SA and SS men, who despite the risk and hardships have stood beyond the big daddy no matter how bleak the future seemed for Germany in the NSDAP. And in front of the audience of perhaps the most loyal Germans a country's ever seen, Hitler can finally and proudly declare that Germany has awoken from a coma. And the following parts of the speech. Hitler brought the recent years of struggle back into the minds of everyone in the Sport Palace, whilst reminding them that this grand victory will only be the first step towards greatness and the end seed. But the true highlight of the speech comes at the very end when Hitler promised to the entirety of the German people that he will only need four years to solve or transform his election promises into reality. Gib mir wir ja seid. Also, if you don't use these, oh, what is this? Oh, you can actually see, that's really nice. Click to hide the construction speed modifiers. That's extremely nice. A base Hoy Force should have that. That's that's really nice. So we have a bonus of uh, infrastructure penalties to naval dockyards, military factories, stuff for uh, civvies and whatnot. That's actually super, 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 super nice. Actually, you can build an allied territory. Fuel capacity, that's all goes up. I wish you could if you build like stuff like that. Um, oh, actually, you know what? oh my god. Oh, shnikes. Flak battery. So like I said earlier, let me know in the comments below, like what do you like to use in Darkest Dark? Because I really have no idea. There's a lot of options here. Um, supply usage, fuel usage, probably not in needed for infantry. I might go with more artillery because I want more soft attack, but then again, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, flak batteries might be good too. Anti-tank might be good as well. Panzer Schwer, uh, Schwer, Panzer Schwer. Huh. Gives you a little bit of armor. Gives you even more armor, so. Uh, let me know what you guys use in the comments below. I, I like in, to understand what you guys do, so. Just take it more. It's fine. <coughs> I can have a recovery plan, my friends. Uh, deal with IG FOB and privatization and austerity. You lose stability, you get a lot of money, you get political power. Rough. <gasps> oh no, a fire in the Reichstag. The Reichstag has been set ablaze nearly a month after Adolf Hitler came into the power as the Weimar Republic's new chancellor. An arson attack has occurred in the Reichstag. The nation's parliament. Such active terrorism is intolerated within our borders, and as such, the perpetrators of such heinous crimes must be punished at the highest level. In response to such attacks of active terrorism, Adolf Hitler has advised us to use Article 48 to enact the Reichstag Fire Decree in response. It calls for the suspension of civil liberties and the abolishment of the KPD, the Communist Party of Germany, and as NSDAP claimed that they have been colluded with a Dutch communist named Marinus van der Lubbe in such a terrorist act. While such a decree is reasonable at this time, given the fact that the communist threat is going out of proportions, unconfirmed reports circulate that NSDAP were actual conspirators of such a terrorist act and are avoiding such crises to garner electoral votes for the next week's election, along with eliminating their greatest rival from the elections. We must tread carefully, as we are in uncharted waters, and one move can change Germany's future forever. These are Verdampton Communisten. Actually, I shouldn't have clicked on that one yet, but. Um, available political advisor, Robert Ley. Gleichschaltungsschen. Gleichschaltungsschen. Action of the free trade union. So that's Autobahn. Expect to drop in unemployment rates is about 7.5%, which is actually very nice. Uh, I don't want to remove the civvies yet, because we want to get them as much as possible and all more consumer goods, but the cost actually political power, and we want more political power right now. So I'll do a Rex Autobahn. Uh, but we got to do the enabling act first. We have enemies on all sides. Preparing to strip us from our constitutional authority to leave this country and reshape it, or reshape it into their own perverted image of a glorious Germany. Such acts can go unpunished and must be purged from society immediately. While the Reichstag fire decree proved itself useful in our regard, it is still not enough. Oh, also, if you want to read about an parliamentarian of democracy in Austria, please go ahead. Um, maybe I should read that either. Um, such acts can go unpunished, of course. While the Reichstag fire decree pr pr proved itself useful in that regard, it is still not enough. We currently are forced into coalition with another political party, the German National People's Party. While they are similar to our party and have the same political goals, they are wild cards and we can't afford to be under political deadlock in a time when our nation needs quick, decisive action. As such, we shall request our Reichstag to pass the Enabling Act. This piece of legislation will allow the German cabinet unanimously fill with their own party members the ability to enact legislation without the consent of the Reichstag. We will also implement our policy swiftly, efficiently, and decisively. If the Reichstag will not support this piece of legislation, we will convince them to support its enactment, regardless if they leave the building dead or alive. So, because this is historical and... Oh, Federal German Election, 93-3. The federal electors are here. Uh, elections is here, and it's considered the most consequential election in the history of our young republic. With the Reichstag fire still fresh in the minds of the voters, along with the effects of the Reichstag fire decree being enacted into law, effectively banning the NKPD from participating in the elections, people are calling for stronger action against terrorism and the civil unrest within our borders. Coupled with the global financial crisis, where people are desperate to take greater action in dealing with such problems with instability and the rise in a country and economic ruin, today's elections will be quintessential and shape the nation's future. NSDAP victory. Nice! Um, 
The National Council and the Federal Council come together to comprise the Austrian Parliament, the main decision and lawmaking body of the country. The National Council is more important out of the two, and in a surprising turn of events, and in a great help to the Chancellor Egil Badolfus, the National Council technically, on its own accord, eliminated itself as a functioning body. After some irregularities about the votes towards the proposal aimed at answering the recent strike by the railway workers, the president and the chairman of the National Council, Karl Lorander, who was a social democrat, saw himself incapable of continuing the session and resigned as president of the National Council. Second president, Rudolf Ramek, a Christian social, took over as chairman. He declared that the previous vote was invalid and demanded that the vote be repeated, resulting in an uproar. Ramek also soon stepped down as the president, and the third president, Stepp Strafner, from the... Uh, GDVP became chairman of the National Council for himself being down soon after. The successive resignations of Renner, Ramek, and Strafner has left the House without a speaker, preventing the session from closing and the National Council incapable of acting. With the showing chaos, the Chancellor has declared that the Parliament had eliminated itself, and the situation was a crisis not provided for in the Constitution, which has given him the opportunity to establish an authoritarian government without Parliament. Condemn their foolish acts. So we're going to really build as many civvies, because civvies give you money. So let's go to our money tree. Oh, Hans Frank, Friends Austria. Oh my god, we're, this is going to be a long series with me reading everything. I can't reach you. <laughs> we make almost $19. As a response to the recent violence in Vienna against our own Nazi brethren, Hans Frank, the Fuhrer's personal lawyers, repeatedly condemned the Austrian government's uh, efforts to undermine their efforts in suppressing the growing right wing and national socialist movement sweeping throughout Austria. He, a lawyer, is himself. But one of the Austria protects the right to assembly and free expression, and the state itself is directly violating their own laws and constitutional articles. As such, he has created a call to arms for all the peoples of Austria to rise up and topple their authoritarian regime, which cowardly hides under the guise of democracy and republicanism. Of course. His statements were quite outlandish and extreme, but of course we must protect our interests in Austria as it shall be the beginning of the end for the Franco-British hegemony in Europe and once and for all. His point we must protect our brethren. So right now, uh, we are pretty high on spending. We're maxed out research, which is really cool. We're okay on uh, social spending. If we did this, it would cost us way more. It gives us a little more political power, which I kind of do like. Um, taxes. I kind of want more taxes, but it hurts our political power and hurts pretty much everything there, so we're not going to really touch that. If we don't use consumer goods factories, we actually get more money. Pretty nice. So pay inflation, current loans. I don't want any loans at all, if possible. I'm sure we're going to take them, though. Use military factories. Military factories cost money, so that's why I want to build ourselves up as much as possible. I, uh, let's get one of these dumpers and start building up some more infrastructure, maybe, depending on what, on what the Autobahn does. Uh, ministers, none right there. Mm, none of these guys. Oh, they do give you some army XP every single day. I do want Rommel. I probably want Shona because I like infantry quite a bit, but we'll see. We will see. Oh, we're in civilian economy as well. Actually, gives us more political power, too. Case Greenland, uh, each in Greenland case, ruling for Denmark. Well, I don't really care about that one. If anybody that, please go ahead. You lose political power in war economy. Didn't you get more research speed? Plus 10%. Oh, that's interesting, huh? Early mobilization would be nice. But we get stuff in our focuses to get us there, so. Happy April, though. Yeah, we have a little bit of money. Beautiful. Enabling act. Gleichaltung. I think we probably want to race through here as fast as possible. Christian resistance. Add positive Christianity. Rex Concordat. An invitation to the Geological Museum. We received an invitation from the government of the UK asking if we'd be able to attend the London Economic Conference. Many other nations have been invited to meet and help and try to find a way out of the devastating economic crisis that has shocked most nations of the world, ruining economies and causing unemployment uh, to skyrocket. Oh, also National Labor Day. Peace is but the inevitable interval between e wars. Start the coordination of the trade unions. Oh, cool. The conference will be held at the Geological Museum in London, with the aims of meeting the meeting, including agreements on the best way to fight the Great Depression, stabilize currency exchange rates, and to revive international trade, which has taken a severe beating as individual countries have such protectionist means to help their ailing economies. Our invitation to this conference is greatly appreciated, not least because of our economies in recession, and coming together with the international community to find a way forward is the best hope of having a strong recovery from the crisis. Pack the bags, we're off to London, and a Weimar flag prohibited. <coughs> we'll raise a victory in the elections and an appointment of Hey, hey, Adolf, as the Reichskanzler, we can finally begin the long and tedious process of healing Germany from the wounds which 15 years of degeneracy and corruption inflicted on our beloved fatherland. Thus, the Fuhrer has declared that from now on, the flag of the weak democracy shall be replaced by the proper German colors, black, white, and red. Let's first step away from the perils of democracy and towards a new Germany. We'll serve as a powerful reminder to everyone that our new Reich will continue the legacy of both the Holy Roman Empire and the Kaiserreich, while also symbolizing to the German folk that our fatherland has finally gotten the new beginning it so desperately needed. The small first step towards our destiny. Uh, I want to do this one. I want to lower unemployment. Oh, but that's like a 30-day focus. Oh, and this one, we can get some more political power this way, so... Gleichaltung. While we have full control over the government now, the people are unsupportive or undecided about our benevolent rule. They're still confused by foreign propaganda, stating that our rule is built on oppression and totalitarianism. Eh, nonsense. To help our population in the effort of Nazification, we shall implement Gleichaltung. 
or cooperation. This program will implement our notification policies throughout the Reich, allowing us to cleanse people of the anti-German propaganda. Every national volunteer association and every local club will be brought under our control, from industrial and agricultural lobbying to groups, uh, to sports associations, football clubs, women's organizations. All shall be guided by the ways of the Reich and the teachings of our Führer. German students burn thousands of books? Floating up from the flames like a mothball's escaping heck, singed fragments of books were high over the Op Opernplatz in Berlin. Tonight, students of the Nazi Alliance German Student Union burned over 25,000 books as part of their action against a non German spirit. First to go were the works of Marx and uh, Kautsky. Also, the consign of the flame were the works by Einstein, Freud, R uh, Remarque, Rathenau, Kafka, Wells, uh, Wilder, and others. Uh, considered anathema to the morals of the new German state. When the students had finished ravaging their university libraries, they looted local bookshops and public libraries, dragging their wares to the sacrificial fires and wheelbarrows and horse cars. Rex Minister of Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, bless his heart, gave a speech nearly as incendiary as the bonfires, decrying decadence and moral corruption, and declaring that a new German spirit will rise from the flames like a phoenix. While the students rapidly fed the flames, others secretly mourned the tragic loss of knowledge and culture. Feed the flames! You don't miss it. Reconnaissance. Hey, yeah, why not? Oh, what do we have here? Promises of peace, issue currency. I definitely don't want that one. Uh, anti democratic raids. We lose a lot of stability. We have total 52% support. That's no, not bad. Enabling act. I love it. Oh, 28%. Unemployment. A second rearmament program. Oh, seems the French have the, started to rebuild their army. The Soviets to do so as well. Uh, the growing communist threat from the east, Anglo uh, French propagation to the west, shows us the need for more soldiers, guns, and ships. And so shows try to accomplish this, yet under the thinly veiled disguise of bigger and better consumer factories. If the Allies notice, nothing shall stop them from totally annihilating us, so it's must be kept as a closely guarded secret. Oh, more war support when you get this done. Uh, more than 20 divisions, eh? Well, we pop them out now. Hmm. It's gonna cost more money. Hmm. Well, we don't have to have them give out right now, so. Specialty. Establish a Geheimer Staatspolizei. Ah, and pass enabling it. Due to the combination of recent events in the form of the fire and the Reichstag, the almost civil war like situation in some areas of the country, and the ever looming threat of a general communist uprising, it has become a priority for Germany to finally equip the government with a sufficient amount of power to combat these existential threats to the well being of the German people. To finally accomplish the Reichstag, as today, has passed a law to remedy the distress of the people in the Reich, which will allow the current government, headed by the Reich's President Hindenburg and Reich's Chancellor Hitler, to pass laws without the approval of the Reichstag, while the laws are also allowed to contradict the Constitution. No more will the wishes of the German people be hindered by corrupt politicians squabbling inside the Reichstag. While outside on the streets, the communists exploit the weaknesses of the government to terrorize the people. From now on, the government will be able to fight back against these godless degenerates. Well, the corrupt politicians will soon be the relic of the past. The National Socialist Revolution is almost complete. There's no room for opposition. Add Paul von Hindenburg. More daily political power goes down. Oh, god dang it. Replace the Weimar era with the limits of the Weimar institutions. Look at that beautiful flag. I guess we could grab one of these guys. Von Goring. Production goes down. More attack aircraft. Production costs for... Uh, it's hard to tell. Tactical bombers. Air attack crafts. Strategic bombers goes worse. Fire attack goes down a little bit for air attack. Must be, or this Milch. This guy's really good. Koda. Okay, General Staff. But, uh, for the Navy. I kind of want the Navy guy, though. I want more naval XP. Ah, screw it, get him anyways. Gleich Uh Official as a Hitler Jungen. Uh, the Hitler Youth Hitler Jugend has been the youth organization of the National Socialist German Workers' Party for over 10 years, allowing young Germans to be introduced to the correct values that every German should hold dear to them early in their life before they can be exposed to the materialistic de de decadence of the communists. Now we're in power and there's nothing standing in our way of authorizing it. We can officialize Hitler Youth, making it state-run, giving it funding from the government to expand its operations, and have begun the socially accepted thing to do to introduce children into the Hitler Youth at the earliest age possible, that being 13. After all, as the DFR said, he who controls the youth controls the future. Gleichaltung la passed. In order to streamline the German political system and strengthen our own position as the only legitimate party in Germany, it's been deemed a necessity by the Führer to fix the mess that is the German regional parliaments. The regional parliaments of Germany have always been a limit to the power of the leader in the Weimar Republic and the Reichstag, and they remain a limit to us now. To amend the state of affairs and the rights created by on the wrongs and right the wrongs created by the Weimar bureaucracy, the Glashaltung has been created, alternatively referred to as the law concerning the reconstruction of the Reich, which will dissolve all regional parliaments down to the communal level. A new centralized system will be implemented in which the blood of mass of those free states, free cities in Prussia are replaced by the thirty Reichsgala, each of which is led by a Gauleiter directly appointed by the German government. This new Reichsgala will be, become the administrative cornerstone of the Reich, and the tool with it within we can do away with a cumbersome bomber of federal system once and for all, allowing the government to use its power to focus on the real issues faced by the Reich. The fan of the democracy are fading away at last. And a loudspeaker in every home. I'll wrap it in a meticulous 
rise in Germany. Uh, I was thanks to a collective effort of a propagandist who repeatedly spread the writings, teachings, and speeches of a glorious Führer throughout the populace, showing them the dream of a new Germany, one that will rise above the ashes and create a Reich that will stand the test of time and bring prosperity to every living soul who subscribes to this dream, unfortunately. While I have secured a position in Germany, the shadows of the Weimar Republic remain, with foreign news outlets and underground organizations publishing misinformation and propaganda aiming to brainwash our people. As such, we shall create the Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda, our media and propaganda arm of the government that will ensure dissenting media is outlawed, and only media that's approved by the Big Daddy himself are only allowed for distribution. The party took over in Danzig. News from the city, free city of Danzig arrived earlier today as the local Nazi party under Gaulet the Albert Foster has won 50% of the vote in the Volkstag elections. Therefore, the Nazis achieved dominance in the city of government, which is so normally overseen by the League of Nations High Commissioner. Commissioner. This wouldn't surprise many and shocked even more, seeing how initially the Nazi party had only had a small amount of success, with 0.8% of the votes in 1927. It was even briefly dissolved, but it seems that this influence grew drastically by capitalizing on pro-German sentiments. The onset of the difficulty, uh, difficult economic ties and the increasingly popularity of the Nazi party in Germany. The Nazis are expected to control the Senate in a few months, with Herr uh, Hermann Rauschening to become president of the Senate of Danzig. Another victory for the cause. What's not to love? A day in the Hitler Youth. It was a hot day, and we had a hard march. Uh, the sun was burning down in the uh, heath, which was bereft of trees. The sand was glistening, I was tired, my feet were hurting these new walking shoes, and every step was hurting, and all I could think about was rest, water, and shade. I clenched my teeth to keep walking, I was the youngest, and this was my first outing. In the front of me strode Rudolph, the leader. He was tall and strong, his backpack was heavy and pressed down on his shoulders. Rudolph carried the bread for us six boys, a cooking pot, and a pile of books, from which he would read his wonderfully thrilling stories at night in the hostel. My backpack only contained a shirt, a couple of sneakers, washing utensils, and some cooking gear, apart from a tarp uh, tarpaulin for the rainy days and straw beds, yet I thought I could not lug this backpack any longer. My comrades all were somewhat older and had camping experience. They hardly felt the heat and hardship of the march. Every now and then, they would sigh and drink lukewarm coffee from the canteens. More and more, I remained behind, even though I, though I tried to make up for my slack by running. Suddenly, Rudolph turned around. He stopped and watched me crawling up from him uh, from a distance, while the comrades continued in the direction of a few trees on the horizon. Tired, Rudolph asked me, kindly, ashamed I had to say yes. Slowly, I walked by side by side. I was limping, but I did not let this on Rudolph. When we got to a juniper bush, the leader sat down and said, For a little rest, relieved, I threw myself down. I didn't want to talk, for I was far too shy. Rudolph gave me something to drink. I thanked him and leaned back, glad to be able to stretch my foot, aching foot and feet. Before I knew it, I was sleeping. When it resumed to march, my feet hurt so much less, and my backpack did not press down on me so much. I was so very glad about that. Germans stand together as one. From the day of a birth to our last dying breath, Germans stand together as one. Uh, Kirschenkampf. Oh, Christian resistance. I don't know which one is more historical. Um, Rex Concordat. I think this is the one. Yeah. I doubt positive Christianity, huh? Fierce Christian resistance. Um, well, we'll see. Subdue the lander. One party state. Well, I do want to do a Rex Autobahn too. Yeah. <coughs> Our economy is faltering as the unemployment has reached unprecedented heights along with a lack of proper transport networks within our Reich. These two key issues must be resolved as quickly as possible. Thankfully, our cabinet ministers have proposed a solution that hit these two birds with one stone. Uh, one grand and pushing stone, of course, the Reich's Autobahn, a large-scale highway network consisting, uh, connecting even the most frontier regions of our Reich. The Reich's Autobahn will ensure connectivity and easy transport of goods and services, along with the faster mobilization of troops in the event of war. Not only that, the amount of jobs that could be potentially created is estimated to be about 600,000, a massive amount that can jumpstart economic growth and subdue the lender. The federal system has been a metaphorical thorn in the Nazi, National Socialist government's backside ever since it was ascension to power. It has slowed down the efficiency of passing the laws of the people of Germany, even the newly granted emergency powers belonging to the Reichskanzler, and the perfect coordination of German society is the goal of the National Socialist movement. To deal with this, we have drafted new Gleichschaltung laws to be put into place. The first Gleichschaltung law, the state parliaments, except Prussia, new state governments, will be put in place with the same powers of the Reich's government. A second Gleichschaltung law, law puts a Reich's governor in nearly complete control of each state, apart from Prussia. The governor's answer to interior minister of Wilhelm Frick, these two changes ensure that Germans take and run as smoothly and efficiently as possible, bring the German nature much closer to its potential than ever before. All that we must do now is implement the laws. A commensary armament. Oh. Build up the economic base. I like that one more. Commensary armament seems like the one we should do. But I might just do this one anyways. Uh, and we'll need to issue MEFO bills too. Because even though I don't want to lose any political power, minus 10% consumer goods is really good. The Allies, which, while in the middle of an economic crisis, are, and are deteriorating in terms of diplomacy, they aren't stupid to allow German rearmament. If we show even a hint of rearming our nation's armed forces, the Allies will exert all forms of diplomatic pressure to starve us from desperately needed resources. As such, we are more than eager to rearm ourselves and solidify ourselves as a dominant power in Europe. We simply can't afford Allied sanctions, but we have a lifeline. 
our president of the Reichsbank, Hallmar Schock, has recently proposed a solution which should create a shell company called the Metallurgical Research Corporation, and we will secretly pull funds for the Reich's great conglomerates as means of final war effort. That way, the Allies won't be able to intervene as they only see business conducted in the beginning of the conference. The days arrived, and all the delegations are here, 66 in total. Before any of the major discussions started, King George V gave a short speech, officially opening the London Economic Conference at the Geological Museum. A number of events was also read out, including the issue of the European war debts to the USA, talks on currency stabilization, and the revival of international trade, while none of the big issues were discussed today. It was a grand banquet in the evening, and with the representatives of each country getting the chance to give small speeches and talk to each other. The mood seems jovial, but only for now. There is bound to be disagreements between the nations, which includes us as well. As the opening day comes to a close, we must hope that this conference brings about much needed cooperation. Cooperation to help the world climb out of the dark hole that is the Great Depression. We need this to succeed. What? Austria bans the DSNAP. In a foolish and futile attempt to prevent our inevitable unification, Austria now banned the local Nazi party, the DSNAP, from all political activities, along with banning all parliamentary youth or any kind of organization harboring Nazi or far-right sentiments. Obviously, the Austrian government fools, for they are representing their own interests. Plague seeing their party before a nation, for they know that it is the people's will to unify with their northern neighbor. Being a part of the Reich as it should be, of course. We could just simply ignore it and allow developments to further unfold along the way, but our movements for the liberation of Europe is at stake. And if we appear weak in our struggle to liberate our southern neighbor, we'll be merely a laughing stock to the imperialists. This will ultimately lead to the fear to decide the fate of Austria once for all. Not worth our time. Let's organize a move from Bavaria. I don't know if this is good or all, but like, I think that's what happened. Right, on the Sabrokin. Terrorist scum. Also, we need more guns too, but you know what else is new? Uh, carrier 33, Battleship 33 would be really nice, so get one of those, get one of those. I'm not sure what is best here. Also, something very unique about this is that uh, we can't upgrade these ships. They are set in stone, so that's that's very different from what I'm used to. Fast battleships, battle cruisers. Um, I really don't want to make anything outdated, really, so. Uh, so there's that. Um, can we train these guys? You might as well train them until we run out of fuel, I guess. Lord of condemns currency stabilization. Economics can be tricky. Very tricky. As we are still building some roads up here in Turingen, so this way we can start building some cities really quickly. The Hugenberg proposal. As the economic conference started to wrap up, a fairly surprising proposal was put on the floor by the Germany's Minister of Economics, Alfred Hugenberg. In an almost laughable attempt at getting Germany's colonial empire back, Hugenberg gave a speech proposing a program of German colonial expansion in Africa and Eastern Europe as a cure for Europe's economic depression. Many advisors and diplomats thought that he was joking at first, but when they realized he wasn't, outrage filled the room. Hugenberg and many German diplomats were made laughingstocks for the rest of the day as the press rushed to get every bit of info for his plan on the front page. Soon after the meeting, both governments of the French and the Soviet Union submitted formal notes of protest. The German government finally formally said that Hugenberg was only stating his personal economic views, and not those of the government. However, Hugenberg has stated that the opposite. Soon they speaking on behalf of the government, causing further ridicule from the West. See the way, Hugenberg's proposal, proposal was clearly rejected. Not embarrassing, I'd say. But maybe that's what we want in the end. Ah, what well, I accept upon. But the Brown Report first. And that the infrastructure of this republic, especially the one made during the early days of the Deutsche Kaiser Reich, is in critical condition, and they need a desperate repair as soon as possible. However, even an infrastructure created more recently, such as the one crested after the end of the Valkyrie, are found to be incapable of sustaining its growing demand, with the ports of degradation and the use of substandard asphalt becoming rampant throughout the country, especially in more rural regions. Expensive project overhaul. The need of both private and public interventions necessary to fund this project and prioritize the creation of the Autobahn, which connects major cities throughout the country, especially the cities such as Berlin, Frankfurt, Munich, and other major cities. If compelled within the next five years, it is expected to generate nearly a million jobs, grow the economy exponentially, and allow Germany to have flexible transport between the western and eastern border regions of the country, allowing for both civilian and military transport. Signed, Fritz Stolt. We'll do that. So, our economy is faltering as unemployment has reached unprecedented heights, along with the lack of proper transport networks within a Reich. These two key issues must be resolved as soon as possible. Plenty of cabinet ministers will propose a solution that will hit two birds with one grand ambitious stone, the Reich's Autobahn, the large scale highway network. Connecting even the most frontier regions of the Reich, Reich's Autobahn will ensure connectivity and easy transport of goods and services, along with their faster mobilization of troops in the event of war. Not only that, the amount of jobs that could be potentially created is estimated to be around 600,000, a massive jump start can jump economic growth. So, we start here. So, here we do this we lose 200 money, which we have. We have. Hitler's ceremonial groundbreaking of the Autobahn, we lose five civvies and construction speed. Removed, unemployment goes down a little bit more. Set to level five. So here, the infrastructure is what? It's four out of five. Because right now I wanted to build up Turingen up to five. By itself. By itself, so we can just start throwing some money at that. Um that's full control front for once true. At least five infrastructure. Oh, we can maybe start it a little bit earlier if we really wanted to. Is it worth doing that? Hmm. So you can oh at least two hundred small arms. Well, okay. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll need some more military factories here then, huh? Go 
with that for now. Because we will need this motorized later on, so. Let's see, Hitler's ceremony of groundbreaking of the Autobahn. Oh, look at that too. Did air glorious fear. Adolf Hitler has attended a groundbreaking ceremony of the Autobahn, an upcoming ambitious highway network that will allow easier connectivity and transport between German cities, along with allowing fast mobilization of our troops in the event of war. In a privileged speech, uh, Adolf Hitler has enthusiastically supported such an ambitious endeavor, seeing that a bridge to follow and together into a strong unified Reich, capable of deterring its enemies through its fast military might, and stable, strong infrastructure capable of ensuring each transport of goods, troops, and war material across Germany. And a feather personally shoveled the dirt along with fellow German workers, showing a symbolic gesture that everyone shall serve and render their services to the Reich. Ein guter Anfang. The second Gleichschaltung law has been passed to further strengthen the German state and community. It has been set to further expand on our previous laws regarding the centralization in Germany, the most important one being... <clears throat> The law regarding the reconstruction of the Reich, and while this law has really helped to recover the Reich from the sectionalism of the Weimar Republic, it is still a necessity to remove the last traces of its incompetent administration. One of the most notable nonsense being the fact that there are people from, for example, Prussia or Baden, so have citizenship of these former states, and in addition to their German citizenships, due to the fact that this is a direct affront to the Volksgemeinschaft and the unity of all Germans, we will immediately get rid of these arbitrary divisions. In addition to this, we we'll also point our Reichs. Stop Hatle, our ex governor, to each state in order to further increase essential government power over Germany. And with this, all these reforms passed, we are one step closer to the finalization of the Glashaltung in Germany. Step by step, the traces of the old vanished from Germany. So good, my friends, so good. We have 10 divisions. We have 10 being made, so Hugenberg's fate. Oh, look at that. Uh, sending Hugenberg to the London Conference has proved to be a complete disaster. During this speech, the man proposed a program of German colonization of Africa and Eastern Europe to solve the world economic crisis. Even though that's what a great nation deserves, it was ridiculous and embarrassing as every German diplomat attending things became a laughingstock at the conference after they realized he was being serious. When other members of the cabinet tried to control the damage he caused by suggesting it was in his own personal beliefs, he still refused to go back on his plan, saying it was on behalf of the German government, even though it clearly wasn't. Besides humiliation, France and the USSR submitted formal complaints about Hugenberg's proposal and were left with two options, sacking him out of the cabinet or keeping him for the time being. Cut Schmidt. It doesn't really matter. Oh god, Alfred von... I don't know which one is historical. Oh crap. Uh, but Hubman Goring appointed Minister, Minister President of Prussia. On this day, Hermann Goring has been appointed Minister President of Prussia following the accumulation of a majority of seats in the Prussian Parliament. Uh, many Germans see this as a formality alone, as a now Minister President has held what amounts to be absolute power in the Parliament for the last couple of months since the election of 32, of course. <clears throat> um, Goring was made Minister of the Interior of Prussia in January 33, controlling the political force of the state. With this, he was managed to quell the political violence of the state effectively, issuing the shooting order to give people the right to fight back against the Marxist dissidents where they stood. With actions uh, against the communists finally tackled, or finally in place, the NSDAP was able to subordinate the Prussian parliament via laws equal as the states. Following this, Goring received the title of Minister President of Prussia, reconvening the Landtag one last time to pass legislative rights to the federal government, essentially making his own little title ceremonial one. A clear example of the respect German putting his duty to the Deutschland before his own glory and power. <coughs> Excuse me. With a police force now bolstered with respectable SA members and a fair just and just president in control of Prussia, we can be sure that these people's will shall be carried out. May the reconvening of the German and Prussian states be swift. So this one, we can sack him, but it doesn't really matter really in the end. So I'm actually looking this up right now as uh, during this video. So um, so it's actually kind of weird. He's kind of a weird guy. Yeah, polarization and whatnot. As for thrones, the rise to power, um, removal from politics. Oh boy, he's got a lot of stuff here. Um, yeah, the French and the Soviets gave out the protests. Um, ah, sack him. So right now, Hugenberg does what? Von Blomberg, which we probably want to get rid of. You really need him for now, constantly. Right? Von Hindenburg, military staff. Do we have you, Hugenberg here at all? Brick? Blumberg? No? We don't? Well, that's kind of weird. I thought we would be already here by now, but, you know, whatever. Uh. Well, it doesn't really matter. Oh, we get unsuccessful conference, anyways. Wait, is it Kurt here? Where's Kurt? Well, oh, uh, here, here's this guy. Von Blumberg, well. Let's go with that one, because I think that's the historical one. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, a one-party state. Well, established German Geheim... The Geheimer Stadtpolizei. That's right, consolidates power in Germany. We must remember that radical organizations, from the reactionaries and the to the communist revolutionaries, all want an end to our new, newly bred rule. 
The Steel Rockets are a living embodiment of what the abhor and so-called warmongering stance on our foreign policies have allowed our adversaries to invest heavily into these factions, hoping for an end to German revanchism. We cannot and will not allow such activities to hold a single stronghold, regardless of whether it be in the most isolated pockets of our territories of Berlin itself. We must establish a secret police, probably Gestapo, to not only deal with the adversaries at home, but to influence foreign governments abroad, paving the way for a smooth transition of power once we reach their homelands. All sure will remember that the Reich isn't some pushover that's easily unstable. On the contrary, our adversaries are everything they call us. Ah. Rx Führer SS Heinrich Himmler opens KZ Dachau. Today, Rx President of Munich and Rx Führer SS Heinrich Himmler announced that the first concentration camp had been opened nearby the town of Dachau, a few miles northwest of Munich. The purpose of the new concentration camp is to remove the corrupted citizens of our nations and good, hardworking individuals that have contributed to the greater German society. Here, all the communists who said would be threatened the security of the state will be contained as it is not possible to leave the individual communist dissidents in local court prisons, the capacity being far too low for the numbers of dissidents present in the nation. In a statement, the Polizei president had this to say, individual experiments made by us have shown that the Marxistic dissidents continue to agitate and attempt to organize. We have taken the measures to concentrate and contending them without regard to petty misgivings in the conviction that we are, we are thereby calming the national population and acting in its spirit. It has been confirmed that 151 dissidents have been transferred to this new camp to be remoted into citizens worthy of the Reich. May they receive the help they need there and become better people, not only for themselves but for the Reich. May their transformation be swift. Arbeit macht frei. Oh, we need... Okay, so we need to keep our political power. Okay. 130 days left. Not bad. Honestly, if we get that anyways, I guess there's no point in even doing it. Just work on the cities then. More money, please. Unknown successful conference. Last officials have left the Geological Museum in London, marking the end of the month's long economic conference. Now, with a focus on the financial crisis, which is still at full force, many major nations have tended to find a solution to the global problem. Even Germany's president, even Germany presented an idea of a recolonization. However, it ultimately ended with no progress made. Wars and debt, uh, war debts and international trade were some of the topics focused on, but all eyes were upon a new plan of currency stabilization. After the U.S. left the gold standard, Many nations felt the exchange rate between the U.S. dollar would be too volatile to fix this. Drafts of currency stabilization were made, by, uh, were made, but were soon halted after President Roosevelt torpedoed this idea by condemning it in a letter. Many financial advisors have been seeing this as a sign that global cooperation and the Depression will now be unlikely, using the conference as a reason why international interventionism or intervention is too complicated to get anywhere. It seems that the nations of the world will have to solve the crisis to their own accord or on our own. Question comp. With a struggle and power for German success, we are still faced with uh, one faction, the Church. The Church, both Protestant and Catholic, have influenced German politics ever since the early days of Prussia, spreading their influences even up to this day. While the people may be supportive of our policies, religion is still a major factor in everyday life, a factor that can be exploited and undermine our influences. As such, we shall launch a Kirchenkampf, or state struggle, a church struggle, to assure their influence over the Church, or we shall partner with them, becoming allies and reshift in not only Germany, but uh, the world, as we have partnered with the dominant religion of the Western world, something upon which both the Reich and the Vatican would wish to exploit. Uh, establishment of the Geheimer Stadt Polizei. Even after Adolf Hitler's meteoric rise to the chancellorship, the parties control the nation is far from absolute. Previously, the Shabab Talung, also known as the SA, though the brown shirts, have been the party's enforcers, providing security at Nazi rallies and disrupting our enemies' fleet events. While the SA has served as well in the past, the ever growing ambition of the commander and Rome have begun to clash with those of the Chancellor. Hemmen Goring, Minister President of Prussia, and Hitler's right hand man has now given us an alternative. Formed out of the political and intelligence departments of the Prussian police, the new Geheimer Stadt Polizei. Uh, no, less formally as a Gestapo, is a more professional force than the street thugs of the SA, Lord Hitler and the Nazi Party, the Gestapo. Under the leadership of the first commander, Rudolf Dius, will root out subversive elements in Prussia and ensure the population remains loyal to Hitler and the Nazi Party. Uh, Goring has already suggested to Hitler that the Gestapo be expanded to the entirety of Germany, and the Chancellor seems receptive to the idea. Now, where do I put my jackpots? Gestapo, nice. Christian Kampf. And which I did look it up, and historically it's more the Reichs Concordat, which actually is still in effect to this day. So, adopt positive Christianity. Really isn't the one we're doing so. Off at the Rosenberg. Yeah. The Catholic Church has condemned national socialist racial ideas time and time again to the priorities of rise to power. Now that we're in control, however, the Catholic Church seems far more open to uh, negotiations than what they used to be. Going against the Catholic Church in the open would not be worth the immense backlash to follow, and adopting non denominational subsections of Christianity would just get backlash from all sides, as such. We see it is necessary to work with the Catholic Church and ensure the stability can reign in the German Reich. Calming international fears of a backlash against the Catholic population, only with the Pope in Rome over the next few weeks, hopefully can coming to an agreement that is advantageous to all the parties involved. And Reich's Partei Tag des Sees. Look at this. This year's annual gathering of the German National Socialist Party in Nuremberg saw the greatest step forward towards ensuring the prolonged purity and strength of the Germanic peoples. Then, as DAP party leaders announced the new laws will consider the safety of the German state, the Aryan law has been put into place against those who illegally exist in the Aryan people's community, and who slander it with greed. Well, they have no reason to be here, and they just come from heck places like that's darn well where they belong, along with the Fuhrer. The Nuremberg laws restrict anyone classed as a Jew and strips them of their illegally owned citizenship. 
The blue shoots gesetz assures that anyone with even a slight bit of Jewish heritage is prohibited from mixing with pure Aryans. Even mixed race Jews and Aryans could be a threat to the German Reich, and therefore under these new laws will not be allowed citizenship. Racial infam infamy has too been heavily outlawed as we mustn't allow our own German blood brethren to pro procreate with the Jews, the security of the Germanic race. Plans to expand these new laws have already hit gossip in the Reichstag and on the street of Berlin. The Reich's Minister of the Interior, in coordination with the Deputy of the Fuhrer, will issue the legal and administrative orders required to implement and complete the law. With these new laws, hopefully, we'll be able to cleanse the Aryan race further through future expansion to help our Germanic brothers in Eastern Europe. Nuremberg shall be the loudspeaker of our struggle. Cool. Ah. 100% chance that Dolphus slain in Nazi uprising in Vienna. Yay! We did it. <laughs> He's dead. So 28%, um... Let's see. The Gestapo. Cool. Oh, cool. Military High Command. Dolphus slain in Nazi uprising in Vienna. A great allocation of resources towards the coup d'etat against Austria has been laid to waste, as the government forces were, un were able to repel the imperial military organization stationed there. There's nothing more than a diplomatic catastrophe against our hegemony in Europe, as we have pulled out plenty of finances to ensure the coup's success, and now has been defeated. It's virtually unacceptable for the Reich and our interests, and we must see that our ambitions in Austria are fully realized, or else Europeans may see us as a laughingstock, of course. We always settle for the alternative, do nothing. It's a viable option for we may intervene, it just may cause more good than harm the good. Italy locks with Italy, so we don't want to do that one, but ignore the development. It sucks. Also, they grab uh, Raider and uh, Kohler here. Pontoon is nice. The book burning continues. Ah! <coughs> Once again, flames and smoke rise through the streets, for the German people have taken to them. Uh, assisting the Fuhrer in, in his attempts to finally destroy the communist propaganda is still present in Germany, of course. Uh, with unrivaled vigor, the German people have started cleansing their local libraries and bookshelves, casting the works of Marx, Freud, Kafka, and others are accused degenerates aside. Uh, this uh, culmination in the burning of 25,000 books deemed morally repugnant in the Oppenplatz, head of the Reich uh, Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, gave a speech nearly as incendiary as a bonfire as the Oppenplatz itself, decrying decadence and moral corruption, declaring that a new German spirit will arise from these flames like a phoenix reborn. Uh, the very groups accused of destroying our nation's spirit, the Jews, politicians, and the so-called intellectuals, are now can clearly see that the German people have re rejected the metaphorical poison that they were meddling, casting into the flames, and with the majority of the whole of these enemies of the Fuhrer and their ideals held over the majority of the German people. Many academics have begun to flee the country in mass, fearing the righteous wrath of the German people. Let the pseudo intellectuals run. Reconstruct the Reich. Nuremberg laws. Ooh. Oh, Pokemon to push. Uh, alternate history for two and three. Cool. The revolutionization may be reversed if we confront it and back down. Walk in the backyard. Form an anti commentary pact. Western Wall. That'd be kind of nice. Trapman mediation. Support came to government. Ooh. The road to war. Heim in the Reich. In the Reich. We organize the Abwehr. Oh. Reorganize the Oberkommando. Oh, this one's a long... Oh, it's a 70-day focus. Oh, I didn't realize it was a 70-day focus. Oh, my goodness. How are we coming along? Oh, we're missing it. Support equipment and motorized. Okay. We've got plenty of guns now, so we'll come back here. And, you know, we'll grab a spot of rubber, too. Why not? Dutch East Indies. I want to support the Chinese Indo Chinese Union. Keep building them cities up, boys and girls. My God, we need them. Uh, Werner Heisenberg awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. Werner Heisenberg, a brilliant young physicist from Germany, of course, has been awarded the Nobel Prize in uh, Physics for his groundbreaking work on the field of quantum mechanics. Heisenberg's theory, known as the Uncertainty Principle, has challenged traditional ideas about the nature of reality and provided new insights into the behavior of subatomic particles. Heisenberg's work has been exhaled as a major achievement in the field of physics and has already sparked a fury of activity among other physicists who are eager to build upon his ideas. The award of the Nobel Prize recognizes the importance of Heisenberg's contributions and is a testament to the young scientist's incredible talent and dedication to his craft, meaning the scientific community. I have expressed their admiration for Heisenberg and his work, with some even calling him the father of quantum mechanics. Heisenberg, Heisenberg himself has said that he's humbled by the award and is grateful for the recognition of his works. The award of the Nobel Prize is a significant milestone in Heisenberg's already impressive career and should be followed by many more achievements and accolades in the years to come. Heisenberg is a, in a shining example of the limitless potential of human curiosity and the power of scientific inquiry uh, to unlock the mysteries of the universe. Cinemara, congratulations. So we got one of them done, nice. We can just shove them out anyways if we need to, but... more than Oh, actually, we need more than 20. Uh, we'll work on it, I guess. We're just gonna grab harsher punishments, nice. Chance to get sick goes down, nice. What that one too. Why not? 
the Bihal Bihal Push commemoration. Oh, that's nice. Today is once again the annual celebration of the Bihal Push, a uh, party's first attempt at spreading the Nazi ideology to the masses and liberate Germany from the foreign imperialism. We tend to seize your power in the city of Munich, one of the major cities in Germany, and hold a significant amount of economic cloud and political influence as such. We believe it to be the best choice at the heart of the revolution. With the help of our monarchist allies, such as Erk Ludendorff, we fought bravely and gallantly to, the fight, to light the fire of the revolution. Unfortunately, the central government see, was not keen to such events occurring in the south, and as such, I sent a sizable amount of police forces to counteract our advances, eventually crushing the revolution temporarily. A single act of German nationalism seems to be remembered and celebrated every year, so that our people will be reinvigorated with nationalism and German supremacy, capable of defending the fatherland from threats both at home and abroad. Okay. I still want to issue MFO bills. Alex Concordat with the Holy See. Today, the details of the Concordat between the Holy See and our great nation were released, and the Concordat itself being finalized in Rome by the Vise Councillor von Papen and Cardinal Secretary of the State Eugenio Pacelli. A shocking development. For the past few months, the world has looked upon a new government with distrust, seeing it as opposed to modern values. To the surprise, the first people to open their arms with a new government in Berlin, in Berlin in an attempt to create a lasting peace was the Holy See itself, headed by Pope Pius XII. The, the Honorable Rex Council has persisted in making sure that the rights of the Catholics within Germany German territory are maintained while preventing Catholic intervention in politics as a whole. The Church has insisted that the Concordat is not an endorsement of the National Socialist teachings, the Rex Council and cared little. This is a victory for all Germans, he stated. The Concordat creates an area of trust which is significant in the struggle against international Jewry. The world recognizes the Concordat as a total diplomatic victory for the Reich, boosting its legitimacy and giving Germany a valuable ally in their fights to come against Bolshevism and Jewry. Germany stands, a bulwark of, against moral repugnancy. Who could, who could possibly doubt our morality? Beautiful. Uh, Cold Bri needs to be launched. Uh, one party state. We have come ever closer to ensuring that the official opposition to the National Socialist Movement ceases, and now it's time to take the last steps towards ensuring that we cannot be contested ever again so long as Germany exists in its current form. So far, we have united the National Socialist and Normal Nationalist Parties, uniting the right wing parties and the National Socialist Party proper as a bulwark against the SPD and other communist agitators. The Center Party disbanded voluntarily in return for no interference in Catholic schools and youth movements, a reason the competition from the center parties in the Reichstag. Communists and Democrats have been fleeing the country ever since the Reichstag fire decrees, but in effect, with the parties becoming all less and less of a concern, but it's time to end this charade once and for all. We shall introduce the law against the formation of new parties, meaning that only the NSDAP shall exist in the Reichstag in perpetua. Yes, as it should. So that should give us more than enough there. This should pop off soon. Oh, great public works, region-wide integration. That's what I get from it, huh? Oh. Ah, yes! Magdeburg. Yes. So good. 27.5%, not bad. Okay, so we have to pop them out. Let's go and do that. Pop them out quickly. Give me a general. I like a train indefinitely, whatever, I don't care. Uh, nice. Train, train, train. And we need one more division at least. Because right now we have 8, 20, we need one more. We literally just need one more. Ah, so good. One party state, my friends. Oh, the MFO bills are due. Our uh, issue bills are due soon. We must decide whether to extend them or begin repayments. If not issued, issue six month extension to go up into effect upon the due date of the current batch of MFO bills. The cost of extension will progressively increase until war breaks out, at which point reliance on the bills is removed and payments delayed until after the war's conclusion. When selected, remove the bills and get some bad stuff there. Not a grocery back with Poland. Peace and stability. Well, so it's got the political power. Poland signs a non aggression pact. Today, the German ambassador. Hans von uh, Hans Adolf von Mocht and the Polish leader Joseph Pilsudski meant to sign the non christian pact proposed by us a few days ago. The pact, an obvious display of Germany's desire for peace and friendly relations with our neighbors, will see our guarantee to Poland that we will be abstain from any military actions against our eastern neighbor, instead, we're resolving to a bilateral negotiations for the next ten years. The pact also guarantees that Poland that will accept the new eastern border, established by the November Verato in 1919, whilst confirming Danzig's status as a free city. The fear seems pleased with the results and hopes that in the future Poland will provide a viable ally against the Bolshevik threat. Who can say now that Germany wants war? Beautiful. And we will all reconstruct the Reich. 
We are nearly the end of the glass shell tongue. While our process is gaining complete control over the country, we have passed many laws that benefit our national socialist movement, including the two glass shell tongue laws and the law for the restoration of professional service, freeing important roles that are critical for the future of the country and from the Jews and communists, as well as the law against the founding of new parties, effectively crushing any and all political opposition. Now, all we have to do now is usher in a new era of prosperity for the fatherland is to pass laws concerning their construction of the Reich. Once passed, this law will formally dissolve the federal government, condemn it, and its failures to history books, allowing us the freedom to pursue our goals and create a new and better Germany as we lead the League of Nations. <coughs> The League of Nations stands as a mocking symbol of the Treaty of Versailles, a paper tiger that acts as though it could stop any nation from doing anything. I failed to do so in Manchuria in 1931 when Japan took it all over. And it, all it continues to do is provide a mouthpiece to the enemies of the fatherland of espoused anti German rhetoric, all while being an echo chamber of bureaucracy where nothing is accomplished. They seek to condemn our current rearmament while our neighbors do the same very well. We can't take it any more of it. Our flag shall not be disgraced with the moniker member of the League of Nations any longer, and Germany's shackles shall be released. Political parties, the epitome of the corrupt nature of the democratic system. These parties, political parties, strive for ideas that are inherently traitors to the average German, for they pander the wealthy capitalists and foreign exploiters who preach economic prostitution in exchange for the democracy that the German people desire. However, some political parties, at least ones aligned with the glorious uh, NSDAP, are inherently pro-German and are seen as partners in the rebuilding of the Reich. As such, the Führer has decided on a sort of compromise measure in order to protect loyal pro-German political parties while purging their decadent malign ones, or malignant ones, a new decree named the Law Against the Founding of the New Parties, as a comprehensive piece of legislation allowing many, any, any new political party or organization after its passage into law, and deems only the NSDAP as a party, legal party, political party of the Reich, with other German political parties being absorbed into it, or its members being prosecuted depending on the political affiliation. As all will ensure a full political hegemony to the NSDAP and its leadership, giving the Führer unlimited power to ensure that the Reich shall live for thousands of years. A thousand years! Rom's uh, Memorandum. While we are now controlling Germany and in the process of creating a stronger revitalized German nation, a few new issues have sprung up as a result. One of the issues is a growing tension between the Reichswehr and the Schubert-Tallon. The leader of the SA, Ernst Röhm, has repeatedly called for the merge and the absorption of the Reichswehr into his ranks, seeing that it allowed Germany to become a global power, as it overrides the decadent Treaty of Versailles, however. Such bold action that Rome suggests merely unsettles the Reich's uh, leadership. Well, currently the most advanced military in Europe, but of course limited to the 100,000 soldiers stated in the treaty. As a result, tensions and the frictions between these two factions grow, and if it isn't settled soon, a revolution may come to our shores. Has Rome gone insane? Yeah, probably. That's wrong. I get army XP. I want that army XP badly. Ah, screw it, get him anyways for now. The Brown Revolution. Jim Dillett defies all world powers, quits the league. Germany announced today that with the withdrawal from the League of Nations and the World Disarmament Conference, at the same time, she announced her willingness to destroy her last machine gun and to mobilize her last soldier if other nations would do likewise. <coughs> with a period of back and forth in the latest meeting of the LON delegates has ensued, ensued, with Germany refusing to slow down its rearmament until the Poland or France disarmed themselves. Each time the notion was refused, and it seemed that the meeting would reach a boiling point. That it did, with the German delegation announcing the exit of the German nation from the League of Nations, setting protests over the other nations constantly maintaining of the humiliation treaties inflicted upon the German nation following the Great War that still continues to this day, while being unwilling to follow their own peacekeeping principles. In line with the temperate tone of all the German pronouncements, officials made a plain to the press that they planned to leave the League smoothly, and in a friendly manner, as righteous protesters and not as rebels. The Reich's counselor maintained in a speech that we desire nothing but peace between all peoples of the world. However, we see this does not go both ways. Glory to the Reich. Laws concerning the reconstruction of the Reich. As the Reich's counselor consolidates his power throughout the German states, his ambitions to restoring Germany to its superpower status has just begun to do that, however. You must be willing to purge, inept, and corrupt the traitors and the bandits, the foreigners and the German collaborators. Anyone who shall threaten the very existence of the new Germany shall be wiped from the face of this earth. We need to build monuments for our success. We must enter defeat its mentality and bring about revanchism. We must win. As such, the Reich's Council has enacted a new law, the law concerning the reconstruction of the Reich. This piece of legislation is ambitious in form, even in its name. It calls for the end of the decadent Weimar Republic, the same republic that has allowed foreigners from all sides to punish and threaten the German people. The same republic which plunged its citizens into external poverty, internal poverty, and suffering, while living luxuriously in their palaces. To in its place, German federal states will be converted into mere provinces, subservient and loyal to the man in Berlin. The federalism, much like democracy, is a malignant tumor that needs to be cut, for it endangers the very unity that will bring us a victory. Germany united last, so we get more political power, we get more fascist support, uh, we remove the limits of the Weimar institutions, which gives 25% more political power, 5% more stability, I know I'm speaking fast, add a repressive system, which gives us 5% more group of population, 10% more stability, and a little bit less war support as well. And if I have the final step in the process of Glashaltum, the Reichstag, or Reichsrat, will be abolished. Beautiful. Build, build, build. For the love of God, you must build faster. Saxon is not, uh, there's not a good enough structure yet. Berlin does. Ah, so you can program. Shove them out. There you go. Ah. So good. <coughs> Excuse me.
excuse me. All right, so I've abolished. Good, sad, good. Uh, motorized. Oh, I kind of like where it's at right now. Oh, wait, we do motorized. Motor 16. 16. Oh, oh there we go. There we go. Ah, the Reichs are at home to the corrupted and opportunists of society. This institution long known to represent the state which constitute our glorious Reich has done everything but represent its constituents. This upper house has been riddled with kleptocrats, of course. The political opportunists and other mischievous representatives who merely exploit their position to enrich their own clan, but not to enrich the nation as a whole, of course. However, the fear of seeing the decadence and corruption that reeks inside this institution has ordered its abolishment immediately, thanks to the expanded powers given to him. He has saved Germany once more from being enveloped by the corrupt elite's establishment. Crowds cheer and celebrate for the Führer has proven to the Reich into the world that no matter how powerful you are, justice shall prevail and all are equal under the eyes of Führer. Justice shall prevail once more. I love it. Nuremberg Laws? Oh, we gotta wait for the guy to die first. Beautiful. It's hard to tell whether the things you can do them or not because it looks so similar. I might like to do belt economic base. Kraftdorsch. That's not bad. Volks of other fact. Give us political power. Get more political power, though. Oh, that's weird. Um, establish a Wehrmacht. We could do that. We need everything else done. We elect the other trees. The hair. Next. We just want the leadership of the Kanzler Kaiser Wilhelm II. Germany acquired a large and capable service fleet. And once at one at, at times, could provide a challenge to the Royal Navy of the British. However, how do nations defeat in the Great War? Heavy restrictions were imposed on us by the Treaty of Versailles, effectively crippling our naval capabilities and restricting us to a measly number of ships. This is all however will change. We'll fu we fully understand the importance of a strong navy and request for dominance, and throughout the use of rapid rearmament plans, we'll soon begin to restore the fleet to its former glory. The Reich will rule upon the waves. Deutsche Arbeitsfront, huh? Hmm. Deal with Aji Faben, privatization and autarky. Getting a lot of money. Let's deal with IG Falcon first. <coughs> well, the rest of our efforts. And to build an army to overshadow our enemies are going extremely well. The general staff and the fear I have recognized that our fuel reserves and production leave much to be desired in case of war and a possible British blockade, with most officers and exports predicting that in the case of war our oil and fuel reserves will run out for after six months. An option to at least reduce the effects of this fuel shortage is the production of synthetic oil through coal liquefaction. This process, however, is not widespread in Germany due to the high production costs and, and it's from a purely economic viewpoint and feasibility. To circumnavigate this, we have decided to approach IG Fabin, Germany's largest chemical company, with a deal, and we should produce a synthetic oil exclusively for the German army. In return, for guaranteed 5% return investments and several other favors, like for the rearmament deals and other government contracts. Uh, privatization armaments, Deutsche Arbeitsfront. A significant amount of independent trade unions without Germany, supposedly to enable collective bargaining and allow fair workers' rights for their members. However, these are merely uh, fronts. Oh, you're going to this, please go ahead. Uh, merely fronts as these trade unions are in fact recruitment grounds for communist sympathizers, indoctrinating our labor force and is subscribing to the morally degrading, degrading ideology that merely oppresses not empower workers. To alleviate the dilemma, of course, uh, we should create the Deutsche Arbeitsfront or the German Labor Front. This trade union will be a national trade union, with the state as a prime representative of the labor force. All members must renounce their membership in other trade unions and are mandated to join. We'll certainly not only remove communist influence in our workers, but also ensure proper labor welfare to our people. Mm, what construction do More factory output is not bad. I like this one too. Uh, Kraft durch Freude. As it is difficult to admit, our tourism industry is currently very weak and stagnant. Our workers are understandably tired and exhausted after a long day of work, and our low wages do not help. This is going to take its toll on our workers, causing many to become less productive, and many workers are discriminated against because of their low wages due to the current class divide. To come with the current state of our tourism sector, as well to improve the well-being and equality of the workers, our brilliant furious begin to initiate the Kraft durch Freude, or Strength through Joy program. The Kraft durch Freude program. Overseen by the Deutsche Arbeitsfront, aims to bring world class tourism and leisure to the average German worker, improving their well being and morale as well as motivating them to work harder for Germany in the future. The KDF will organize a variety of events and activities, as well as subsidize many workers' vacations and cruise trips. The KDF will also work to improve workplace hygiene and air quality, which will significantly improve working conditions in many workplaces. If successfully implemented, this program will last at least and improve our currently stagnant tourism, bringing quality to the common worker and greatly improve its well being. Nice! Deal with IG Fabian. The final draft of Contract 1048, Ajifal and the government of the German Reich, parties present during the negotiations, Party 1, Halmer Schock, the economic minister, as a representative for the government of the German Reich, hereafter referred to as the government. Party 2, the board of directors of the Interessengemeinschaft of Farben Industrie, AG, composed of a couple guys. A lot of guys, actually, uh, referred to as IG The Parties are represented in the signing of the contract of Party 1, Schock, uh, Adolf Hitler. Party 2 is the board of directors of the Interessengemeinschaft Farben Industrie AG, composed of those guys. Summary 1. IG Farben agrees to produce as much synthetic oil as possible for the German government, too, in exchange for this. 
I can agree to buy every liter of synthetic oil and fuel produced for the price of a half a, a Rexmark per liter. Three, the government agrees to invest in the bonds issued by IG Farben. Four, the government agrees to invest in the companies of IG Farben. Five, the government guarantees IG Farben the control of newly acquired foreign chemical plants should they come under the control of the government. Six, IG Farben agrees to remove all Jewish members from its board of directors. Seven, IG Farben agrees to further research into the subject matter of the synthetic fuel and oil production. Eight, the government agrees to consider the and prefer IG Farben for new contracts. Nine, the government agrees to assign available workforces to IG Farben to ensure the current number of workers not suffice. Oh. Ten, the government agrees to abstain from any sort of nationalization of the property of the IG Farben. Synthetics are the future, my friends. But then we must talk about the Glashaltung Aktion of the Free Trade Unions, and then we'll end with Kraft Deutsch Freude. We got a lot of political power here. I love it. Anything else we can spend it on? The US bans gold standard? Oh boy. The road is open again. Factory output goes down, but more weekly stability. It's already pretty high. It's not going up any higher. Would that, that really be worth doing, though? Early mobilization. It hurts our political power. Division organization increases by 10%. We get 5% more consumer goods. Um, it also hurt our civilian construction speed by 5%. And hurt infrastructure construction speed by 10%, which doesn't even matter, really. Research speed goes down. Oh, it goes up by 10%, too. Well, we're going to do this one, anyways. So this one, replace civilian with early mobilization. If you can get all the way down here fast enough. Total Krieg is a war over these guys. Add total mobilization. But what if we wanted to go faster? Form the Great German Reich, of course, but... What if I should, what should I use with my political power? That's a good question. In a further repression of the left in Germany, German uh, Chancellor Adolf Hitler has ordered the Gleichschaltung Aktion, a better known as the Nazification of Trade Unions. Several trade unions mean places, offices, and homes have been raided and occupied in recent weeks, resulting in dozens of arrests, beatings, and even deaths of several union leaders. Furniture and paper files were also destroyed. While the measures were destructive, the German people widely supported them as the necessary anti-communist measures in the aftermath of the Reichstag fire. A German version known as the German Labor Front has been established in place of the trade unions, with the funds seized from the original trade unions expected to be directed towards the new front. The appointment head of the Labor Front, uh, Robert Ley, has promised to restore absolute leadership to the natural leader of a factory, that is, the employer. Only the employer can decide, another relic of the Weimar era destroyed. More political power, first consumer goods, though, but we're not going to follow the Reichstag Bank, we're definitely going to go with po politicized autarky with a four-year plan, which is something we definitely, 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 definitely want to do, but, you know what, I'll let you guys decide. Should we build up the economic base, which is what I want to do, or should we commence rearmament, which is a little cheaper overall? So let me know, which one should we do, commence rearmament, or build up the economic base? As well, so I'm trying to figure out what we should do with our political power now that we have 175, and we get quite a bit every single day. So, regardless, if you enjoyed the first episode, please do consider leaving a fat like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as well as see what else we can do with the German Reich in 1934, and maybe even in 1935, as we make Germany a better place. Thanks for watching, and have a great mustache rest of your day.